from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen said to the people, the elders, and the scribes, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always oppose the Holy Spirit. You are just like your ancestors. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They put to death those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, whose betrayers and murderers you have now become. You received the law as transmitted by angels, but you did not observe it. When they heard this, they were infuriated, and they ground their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked up intently to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed upon him together. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, Receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he said this, he fell asleep. Now Saul was consenting to his execution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Into your hands, O Lord. I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Be my rock of refuge, a stronghold to give me safety. You are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead and guide me. Into Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O faithful God. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. My trust is in the Lord. I will rejoice and be glad of your mercy. Into Into your your hands, hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from the plottings of men. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. The crowd said to Jesus, what sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to Jesus, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. One quick observation about the first reading. There was a book written back in the 60s, I think, maybe, entitled How to Win Friends and Influence People. Stephen never read that book. I'll just leave it at that. The gospel is important. In these days of the first half of Easter, what we get for our gospel readings are meditations that come from the third and now the sixth 
chapters of St. John's Gospel so that they are reflections on the great sacramental life of the church, particularly of baptism and of Eucharist. That's our first half of the Easter season scripture readings for daily Mass. The second half will be excerpts from the Farewell Discourse of 14, 15, and 16 from John's Gospel, and then the Prayer for Unity in chapter 17 in the Garden of Gethsemane. So the structure of the lectionary is broken up in that way to offer us insight. And today we get the basic promise of the bread of life. It'll be expanded, of course, and scholars will tell you that there seem to be two parts to the bread of life discourse, kind of stitched together in, in strange kind of ways. And what we have here is Jesus himself and the word that he presents as the bread of life. And then later on, it's in kind of a, a, a secondary attachment, you might say, into the reading that assures us that that bread of life is the very flesh and very blood of Jesus Christ. And if we get the basic promise right here, in point of fact, the family has chosen that secondary gospel reading from chapters uh, 6, verses 51 to 59 for the funeral for today. For my flesh is true food, my blood is true drink, absolutely. But what do we get here today? Jesus himself is the bread comes down from heaven. The rabbis were very strong on how Torah the instruction that comes from God. Torah is symbolized in the Old Testament by bread. And so when Jesus calls himself the bread of life, he's also calling himself the word of God, the instruction of God, the true Torah. And in John's gospel, Jesus is, if you like, the perfection of so much of what was promised in Israel, whether he's the living water, the bread of life, the true giver of the spirit. It's, it's, it's a beautiful way in which John, the evangelist, puts all this together. And just listen to the words that the people, and don't forget this is not necessarily uh, all the people who were at the multiplication of loaves and fish, but this, these sayings are now taking place, we are told, in a synagogue in Capernaum, okay? So they say, give us this bread always. Doesn't that sound exactly like the woman at the well? Sir, give me this water that I don't have to thirst again. So Jesus quenches our thirst, he feeds us, and he gives us his own life in our in our support for our hearts. So we can thank God for the gift of the Eucharist that we celebrate, where we celebrate the presence of Jesus Christ, the true word of God, the true instruction, the true bread of life. Let us stand and pray.